So, as I record this particular video, me and my family are preparing to go uh, on vacation. One of the destinations that we're going is Canada. And there's a theme park up in Canada, and it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Niagara Falls as well, maybe a beach um, on one of the on big lakes up there. One of the things that I don't do on vacation, and I don't think you do either, is that you're going to enter into like another country or another state, something that you're going to enjoy the time, and you just stand there in the middle of a field and call an Uber to take you back home, right? So how ridiculous would that be? If you're, if you're there, you, go, you, you spend all this money to go to the vacation spot, you stand in the middle of a building or in the middle of a field, and you call an Uber and say, hey, take me home. I, I stepped my foot over here, I'm good to go. We wouldn't do that, would we? Usually on vacation, we go on excursions or we do something fun. Even sitting on the beach is something that we're doing and it's productive, right? It's productive for us. I think sometimes as Christians, we look at our lives here on earth in that negative way that I just mentioned. That we're here for a time, but this life really doesn't matter. We're just kind of waiting till we get to the other side. The Bible teaches us something very different than that. If we were, if we were to go throughout Scripture, it would talk about uh, purpose and mission and meaning. And we are called to be that kind of person if Christ is in our lives. Now, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 is often read incorrectly. And if we go to the extreme, we might look at it the first way that I talked about. And it's Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 says this, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know Jesus is coming back. We know that he is truthful, that he is true, that he is love, and he's going to come back and that there's going to be a second coming. That's all in scripture, and we know that to be the case. But if we're not careful, we're going to look at that information as a, hey, I'm coming, just stay where you're at, don't do anything until I come back. But even Christ himself said to his disciples that there, there's mission to be had, there's purpose, there's Great Commission stuff going on here. That in order for you to be able to live this productive life, that no matter what kind of job you have, or if you don't have one at all, you are called to live out the Great Commission if Christ is in your heart. The Holy Spirit has indwelled us, has pushed away the sin, and now we are to live our life in gratitude. So, living our life in gratitude is probably the most interesting and easy way for evangelism. And this idea of evangelism means that we are sharing the good news of the victory that we have in Jesus Christ with the world around us. Sometimes evangelism can get a bad rap. It's like the, the guy on the street corner with a bullhorn and a sandwich board around him. And he has his microphone and, and all these kind of things that we sometimes think of as evangelism. But what evangelism really is at its very core is, is looking at the world around us and recognizing that they need to hear the story. Not because we're doing a finger wag, but, but because we desperately want people to know who this life-giving Jesus is. So today, let's not get into this habit of thinking that this earthly world, even though our citizenship is in heaven, that this earthly world doesn't matter whatsoever because this is the training ground and the proving ground for what what goes on over there our heaven life starts here and we are supposed to be influential and we're supposed to guide the culture we're supposed to be those people so i hope you learned something today have a great rest of the week